what's happening guys um, due to multiple requests and comments and such um, I guess it's time to came to do a, a large follow-up video of the Nissan R50 Infiniti QX build that I'm building as a project on my own kind of thing for myself uh, so let's look over and I'll do my best to uh, fill you in on details that make sense so a few months back I picked up this 2002 beautiful 2002 QX4 in a very good shape in my in my opinion never been wrecked one owner uh, it was an auction sale uh, I got lucky I picked it up for uh, right about five grand this thing has uh, currently 86,000 miles on it. And like I said, it's a one owner rig, California. So it does not have a cold weather package, like, you know, butt heaters or whatever. Um, but it has everything else and everything else can be added as many of you guys know. So first thing under the hood, um, before we shut that down, in case anybody's interested in any of these numbers to match the paint codes or anything. Now keep in mind, this is a sitting project or, or ongoing project, so certain things are just kind of abandoned shape in a certain sense of form so first thing first a lot of guys were asking about the power plant that i put in here power plant meaning uh the battery for uh, electrical right so this is an odyssey agm um and it shows doo -doo 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 i believe there was say we go so it's a 74 amp hour battery and it fits in here, as you can see, with factory brackets. Um, the only thing I think I had a difficulty with is having to redo the, well, I mean, I redid the wiring, that's one thing, but before I even redid the, the clamps and all, uh, the factory wires, you have to disconnect some of the connectors down there, as you see, like the metal, the metal one with the red and black cable. And then the plastic tab right down there you have to disconnect those so the cables get longer to uh, adjust to this battery but this battery fits in perfect uh, i gotta tie down i'm actually thinking of cutting down these two because they're kind of sticking out i think in my opinion a little too much almost like dangerously too much i don't know but they're just kind of bugging me uh, anyways i uh, redid the wiring a little bit i uh, redid my all my connections uh took the factory plug apart so i'm wiring i'm running here so this is power for the winch um and then this is going to the to the rear for the rear power outlet completely rear and these are factory ones that go to the motor and again extra ground so there's an extra i put an extra ground wire right to the body and then one for obviously winch uh, and another goes to the back so everything is hot all the time going to the rear um, eventually this will get a fuse here I know it's necessary and it will get there I just haven't gotten there right now during the build process um, other than that nothing else got moved uh, everything under the hood as it was factory as you see I haven't touched this thing at all uh, since I've gotten the only thing I replaced was the um, HVAC resistor because fan was blowing either on or off I guess like on high and off completely right uh, next thing from outside you will notice is the winch plate carrier that's stuck into the factory uh, bumper cover. Um, I've had guys ask me about this. If anybody's interested, I could make one uh, for you as well. Uh, I'm just basing them off. Probably, I don't know. You know we can make, we can make a an agreement price, but you know, this is a, a process to make. So if anybody's interested in one, I can make one definitely for them uh, upon agreed price depending you know where you're going where you're shipping and what your requirements are but in general considering for a, a basic winch mount like this um, it turned out pretty good looks nice and tucked in doesn't stick out much past the factory so it's not really you know taking out any of your approach angle for the obstacles and again this thing will be lifted and uh, the goal is to put 33 so what i ordered is a tough dog uh, front struts they're 30 millimeter which i think is roughly inch and a quarter inch and a half uh, uh, extended height versus the factory i did add uh, mile markers hubs 
Um, and this thing is sitting currently actually on GX470 wheels and tires. And they're, I think, like a 29 size. But considering that I have the winch with the plate, you know, the heavier maybe battery a little bit than a factory, and then the rear drawer system, this thing actually did settle quite a bit, again, with the weight of rooftop tent. So, uh, with the front all taken care of, let's get this place uh, wrapped up to the next step. I'm assuming that many will know what that is. If you don't, this is a rooftop tent. Uh, the company, the brand is CVT. It's local Oregon. Um, I'm not going to say manufacturer, but they're, you know, producer. Because all, all stuff nowadays, as most of you guys would know, is made in China. But anyways, um, a little peeling of the clear coat because mine sits outside literally and gets really weathered out. I do use and abuse, uh, in a certain sense, my... Uh, stuff and i have a specific relationship i guess you could say with cvt where i test some stuff for him sometimes and um, i'll just say that i'm you know i'm pushing the limits of some of the equipment i am very happy with it i have no problems no issues uh being living in pacific northwest you have to consider with all these clouds and everything you gotta vent your stuff out so uh if you're not you know if you're not camping in it once or twice a month or whatever so it doesn't get opened up uh, as much as it technically should for venting purposes you should vent it separately in my case i just vent it out from time to time i do use it more often than probably a normal user would use it uh, my wife and i we really enjoy the ability of you know being able to sleep in a rooftop tent considering whatever the weather it throws at you either it's cold in a winter with a diesel heater or uh, you know summer or rain or whatever in oregon whatever it doesn't matter so anyways rooftop tent uh simple setup on bars so running the the track i made little plates with the weld nuts in there and just screwed the hardware right hardware and it's only about an inch lift here so this is roughly going to be 25 millimeter rise this is a one inch tube so um, what is it 25 millimeter as well i guess and a uh, very low profile that was my goal you're still able to use the the sunroof moonroof option uh but it's very low profile so you know you don't want to have it high up for air drag and all and eventually i think i'll i'll, I'll add some sort of a fairing in there as well so that's the uh, rooftop part uh sliders eventually will come in place everybody who crawls or overlands or off-roads knows that those are very useful and considering especially that this thing is not a frame it's a uh, unibody so there's no frame in there so you want to be able to protect your uh, your bottom parts there as much as you can uh, did a little trimming in the back and then stopped and the reason i stopped is that i want to do a swing out carrier for the spare tire and fuel cans uh, but then how things are going to look when you actually have it this way versus when it's lifted so i figured at this point this is good enough um, i made my own hitch receiver plate that goes in there so this is basically a current recovery point slash hitch receiver to tow the trailer um, other than that that's about it on the exterior also something you will see through is one of my first prototypes that i did on the molly panels that are also available i do sell those uh, the AR stands for Adventure Ready. That's the new brand I'm trying to develop with the whole overlanding field that uh, I went into uh, full-time business, I guess, with, if that makes sense. <coughs> so let's uh, mount up the camera. Or before we mount out the camera, I guess we can start opening up. So I did remove the fairing completely because it was getting in the way of the tent and just, I don't really see the point of having them. So rear drawer system. So we talked about the power plant or the battery that powers everything. So I ran that bigger gauge wire back over here. And it's all right now tucked in here. So we'll get to that later. But basically I ran power from the battery over here. Um, here's my power station if you want to call it that way. So you got uh, four USBs. Battery showing 12.1 because it's been sitting around and the fridge is actually on. Well, I mean, it's not on, but it's plugged in, so it's using up a little bit of electricity, possibly. Uh, and then there's two of the regular 12, 12 plugs. Um, let's see. Then we got the lights here for the top. Very useful. 
for those who do not have those i highly recommend i mean right now nowadays led lights something like this they're like 10 bucks on amazon i mean as cheap as it gets uh, i did my best to wire it up nicely so it's all tucked in and i did make a couple of posts on the facebook group where wires are fished in here and then they actually go through here so everything looks factory you know it's nice and clean does not have anything extras these lights have come out to be very very useful especially at night um you know when you're doing something in the back right so lights the next uh, extra light button which will put lights in the bumper or in the swing out that's additional lighting they're not wired up the button's not wired up yet but it will get used eventually and then we have the airb compressor that's also built in the side here and obviously the the check part for the air compressor so drawer system is very basic it's a half inch ply this was my prototype so just kind of you know did what i could um i mean for for some i guess it came out amazing while my ocd says that you know it still needs a bunch of work i come from a from a background of restoring snow cats so doing something like this for me is uh not a first timer kind of thing i mean first timer is a kitchen setup but not a first time as far as just like building things like that i guess so uh the goal of the drawer system was to make it flat so you can still perfectly see everything through the back useful pantry space useful side compartments obviously having the power station we'll call it in the back uh with fitting in the fridge so this way when you're doing your camping overlanding trip we'll just call it that um, everything will be in its own place uh, for now basically the way it looks is the right side i have my recovery gear with the deflator inflator light those who don't know what these are i built it myself gosh probably a long time ago when the first ridges actually came out uh, diffuse light on the ram mount suction cup you just attach the bowl mount here and then you extend the wire with a switch and this thing is very efficient and i mean they have the more efficient options now of leds obviously but this is a very efficient you plug it in over here you use the suction cup to mount it anywhere you want so in case you're doing any repair or you need just extra camp light this is perfect highly recommend doing something like this as a diy project you know and your basic shackles like i said basic basic stuff gloves and such so then we have the winch line extension you can tell that i haven't really used it yet and then air hose to pump up your tires back part here you can see wires going out to the switches eventually i'll cover this up probably so it doesn't get hit or damaged during the traveling or off-roading and if you open up this depart department compartment whatever you want to call it okay i'm doing my best working with one hand here so we got the compressor and then we got the the power wires that come from the front that we were talking about earlier right and this just works perfect everything's covered up you got a little breathing vents right for the compressor um compressor does get warm and there's a ventilation uh tubing that goes to the quarter panel and some kind of breather i think but you know considering that some guys will mount the compressor either under the car where all the elements are or under the hood where all the heat is or under the seat where your heater blowing i mean doesn't matter where you mount it no matter what really compressor is still going to be kind of in a position of being in the hot area so in my opinion that's a good spot for now i mean eventually we'll find out maybe i'll need to bring the breather out somewhere else where it's more fresh air i guess ideal for it but is it necessary who knows so take 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 your own experience on it and uh, see how it goes let me uh put these things away so once everything is in place lid over let's go to this lid so this section was my plan was to obviously uh, store other things now keep in mind that you have the wheel wells that stick out so that's the reasoning for the straightness of these two sections and the rest kind of has to fill in right uh, there's no point of putting a shelf here uh, simply because just the access here would be very minimal so you'd have to make almost a separate opening and honestly to just reach in here and lift stuff out is simple i guess this guy could technically go eventually here along with uh, antennas and radios and such um, haven't gotten there yet so we got camping chairs an excellent camp light if you don't have one of these 
for your tent. I mean, it is a CVT obviously, but this thing is awesome. I would run it for multiple nights on the light and on a fan option because it will uh, circulate air in your tent, which makes it very useful in my opinion. Uh, foldable table, Camco. Most of these things are obviously Amazon purchase. So Camco folding bamboo table. This thing is, I'm gonna say, probably maybe two feet, a little bit two feet. There's an XL version of it, which is probably as wide as your whole uh, area here. But this one is perfect for just a regular camping situations. And a couple more of these folding chairs. And these are awesome. I, I highly recommend these. Um, now these right here are better. I think they're a little bit more expensive. I don't see the brand on them. But um, if anybody interested, I could put the links. Actually, I'll just put the links in the description of the video to make it easy. Um, these are nice because they're compact. They still work well. Uh, both have great back support. This one has a better one because it's a little bit bigger. But obviously, you could see that it is way bigger. And it is. this one is like way more compact this way. Well, this one is larger. It's probably, I'm going to say maybe twice as large as that one in general form but this one is way more comfortable and the way legs are set up is actually better uh, but in any case um, these chairs I, I carry four just because you never know how many people you're gonna have with you uh, and they fit in here ideal so again space that's around the wheel well um, the chairs do their perfect job of filling in the space and then the table comes in Okay, let me pause and pack. So everything packed out. You know, there's still more space in here. This thing just clicks in. Perfect. Uh, this cover here, many I have asked before. Uh, this is yacht flooring. And again, all available on Amazon. Um, I chose this one because I thought maybe on CNC I could eventually uh, engrave something, you know, like a logo or something to make it nice. Uh, but this space now, as you can see, is right flat out. I mean, the future plan I do have to build a headache rack uh, to be able to uh, put things in there if uh, need be or whatever, or just to prevent, you know, your, your luggage, your bags or whatever, or other things that you might be able to put here or want to put here uh, on the trail. Another question is the backside. How's the backside look and how much more space you have? So you have, I'm gonna say, probably about five to six inches here so it's about 15 centimeters of space here if you you know do your own math here on with your own rig um so yes obviously you could stuff in here anything from a rifle to uh your oils or any other things that you might want to even mount up to the back of the drawer system or just you know lay them out somehow you know stuff them with whatever other things or belongings give you an idea how this thing looks from the other side and you know everything can be perfected made fit better but you know is there a point or is there a need for it so this is the back side again um, i actually had a couple of guys ask uh that bought molly panels for me to make a molly panel for the back seats so they can mount some other gear to this so it all can be done let me know give me some feedback uh, you know it is kind of a tough to make something produce it uh in a very small batch because it becomes very expensive in the end uh, unless you actually mass, mass produce it. So uh, I'm gonna put this phone on a tripod and uh, pull out the drawer system. All right, so the moving of the drawer system. So it's a double slide and this is deep. I mean, there's a lot of space in here and this is obviously as long or as lengthy or as deep as your trunk. And then you have the bottom, which is getting the, the drawer for your stove and probably utensils uh, i do have the stove it's going to be inset one that's kind of a, like a home use stove that i'm uh, modifying to fit in here uh, but in general so this is a double slide out and this is in all my days of travel this is a lot of pantry space to put your things in there that you need so pots and pans um certain canned foods dry foods whatever you're going to put in here um, this is a lot of space and in most cases in the vehicle in such in a similar setup you're not really traveling uh more than you know driver and a co-pilot if you're traveling for more uh it's going to be a shorter term type of trip where you don't need 
a lot of supplies in general other than maybe cold, cold colder drinks in your fridge um, but in the case here like this is perfect I haven't even opened it up yet because i have two i bought two of these one for the rig one for the trailer uh, perfect sets for your uh you know for four people nice forks and everything everything nicely organized again this will get some more dividers and a fold-up bar type of countertop um, but i think this is very useful these so you can use hooks here to hang a paper towel uh, or you hang a paper towel somewhere here doesn't matter where uh, if you just need to do a basic basic let's warm up some water and it's raining you can just slide it out and be still under the cover of your uh, trunk section or the area trunk lid so here we got and one kind of a mistake but it's not really a mistake it's just something that was overseen on the uh, overseed on the first build is that um so these sold in pairs the guides and these are 250 pound ones not 500 pound ones i think 500 pounds ones are definitely an overkill i've seen multiple builds uh then even the guys that i know personally they just use 100 pound slides and they've been willing those for probably what, three years now and they work just fine and believe it or not if you never held one 30 inch slide that's 500 pound rated um you don't really realize how heavy they are actually and that's that's a lot of weight i mean just in general a lot of weight so these uh are 250 pound ones i think they're two and a half only rather than three inch uh thick that are um the 500 ones um, and then again um in the case like this i should have bought a set of lockable ones and a pair of non-lockable ones in the end basically uh, it's a lot easier to operate with one hand now when i'm not holding the camera obviously you just use two hands so you just grab one hand here and you press it with your thumb and another one you know press here with the thumb and you just pull it out it's not that complicated it can be redone obviously but for the purposes of prototyping i think this is perfect again i'll do the follow-up when i finish uh building this out uh fridge let's talk about this guy uh it's a dometic one i've had it for i'm gonna say six seven years now it's been through many many trips this is a 35 quart i just keep some basic stuff in here that never leaves this section uh keep in mind that while using the fridge your volume of usable space is a lot larger than a comparable to a 40 quart or 40 liter cooler because when you're using a cooler uh probably you know almost a half or better half of the space in your cooler will be utilized for the actual ice so you're only able to fit half as many things in here here's a little data on it you know what it draws and what its volume or whatever it is right so and this thing is a fridge with a dairy section um this guy right now on the market they don't sell this model specifically because there's obviously an updated one i'm gonna say uh, one i bought for a customer that i recently built a jeep for uh it was around thousand dollars i bought this one back in the day i'm gonna say off some rv site for like 700 bucks perfect it's a compressor the medic i mean they're just great um can't say anything bad about them i have had ones that have the medics that have had issues within the first six months that i've used but warranty covered everything uh but this one along with another one i have have worked great and i mean no issues at all um, so basically 12 volt 12 volt power and i like to keep my fridges and everything so i put a separate plug run the wires in here with a little cable protector so what you're getting is you never get the the cable kink i'm gonna see if i can so as you see as you're rolling in the fridge yeah, i can't see it here very well but the point is that uh dark so the whole point is basically your cable comes out with the fridge right um, a lot of guys will do this and then they do not have that sense of security on the cable so in which end the cable gets uh, damaged uh, cut whatever you know and then you have issues down the road so something to keep in mind again like i said kind of ocd paying attention to the detail uh wired up um 
it's as you saw it's plugged in so if you want to actually turn it on you just press it you set it to whatever degree so like my regular use would be three or four degrees celsius which is if you press it through the menu you can uh, do celsius or fahrenheit so let's get it set to fahrenheit so the guys who don't know how celsius degrees work they'll know the numbers so set so 37 is three degrees celsius but this thing has option obviously you know go from uh, celsius to fahrenheit uh or and this is supposed to be an md but it has a low medium and high sensitivity to your battery draw or battery capacity that it's reading so basically what happens is if you set it to low um, in the manual you can read up the numbers but if you set it to low it'll keep draining your battery down to I won't, i'm gonna say like i think it was 11 9 volts or something if you set it to high it'll have a high sensitivity of draw to the battery so if battery reaches like 12 1 or 12 2 it will shut off actually right so just something to keep in mind so the the way this these are made is they're made in consideration of not you know destroying your battery to the point where you can't start the car just something to keep in mind Again, my personal experience goes back to where I have used this fridge dry camping for three days straight, running off a similar sized uh, AGM battery and still was able to start my car. Um, another thing, if you are bothered by the fact that, uh, you know, you want to do a dual battery setup or you're not feeling safe where the battery is getting draw, uh, draw, you know, the dry might be too much or whatever. Um, well, carry a jump pack, one of those smaller battery packs that you can jump with. Now, I'm not talking about Jackery, I'm talking about an actual jump pack that's meant only to start like the bo like a booster jump pack, right? Um, and they have very compact ones, which will perfectly work for uh, something this size of the motor, like a 3.5 VQ in a, in a Nissan. So, uh, one last thing, not least but last, is I had questions about this to many guys and... Again, if I sh I'm not gonna ask if, I think I'm just gonna post all the links in description on the radio. This thing is great, no questions. Did not have much trouble wiring it up, but uh, the adapter and all this information is online. If anybody has specific questions, I can I can uh, help you out with that. But uh, it is, you know, Bluetooth available. You can uh, run SD card or you can run a USB in here. Um, it does have ability to do front and back cameras which eventually i'll get to as well um, and just everything else kind of options like your gps your mirroring to your phone for for navigation or for any other media use or whatever so excellent well i'm pushing gosh half an hour so hopefully you guys seen uh, everything you wanted to see and i did not bore you out of your mind uh, with all the information um, other than that, uh, like I said, uh, comment below, subscribe for the updates on the build or any other stuff that happens in my shop. And uh, I think that's about it until I guess next video. Cheers.